Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the De Montfort University live stream from the School and College Liaison Team. If it's your first stream that you're joining um, DMU with today, uh, welcome. If you have seen us before, uh, then welcome back. We look forward to chatting you, to you again. Um, if you haven't joined one of our streams before, uh, this is your opportunity to have a chat with us, uh, engage with us, ask us some questions, say hello. Uh, we're here to answer your questions and hopefully, you know, give you a bit of information to make the next steps of wherever you are in the higher education cycle a little bit easier to get through and pinpoint through some of the kind of things that you need to know and most importantly, some of the research uh, that you need to do as well. So today's session, if you're a little bit confused, not sure where you are today, I feel think some of my team members that will be joining me today feel a bit like this this morning. We did a six hour live stream yesterday. So uh, today should be a bit of a piece of cake. Uh, we'll be with you now for about the next hour or so. Again, your opportunity to ask questions. And we'll be speaking to you about some of the benefits of university. So why go to university and also how to start making those important choices. So things like where to go to university, what to study um, and what do you want to get out of your student life experience? Now, if you're watching us on the DMU website, uh, you might not be able to comment, but you can look at the bottom of the video and you can see that it says YouTube at the bottom. Click on that, takes you through to YouTube and you can start posting comments. Uh, give us a little wave if you can. And you might be watching us on Facebook. Again, you can leave some comments for us. Uh, but now I'm going to go on to introducing uh, the team today. So hopefully everybody's had at least two cups of coffee to get themselves raring to go, a bit of energy today, a bit of enthusiasm on higher education, because it is a fantastic experience. You know, it's uh, what some people say are the best years of your life. Um, so. Without further ado, I'll introduce you to our first team member. Good morning, Dal. Oh, that was very risky, Faye. I could have been doing all sorts then, I tell you. No heads up, no warning. You didn't look like you were looking, so I just thought, no introduction, <laughs> straight in there. Have you had at least three cups of coffee today? I haven't, actually. I'm trying to desensitise myself from caffeine, because I feel like I'm just drinking far too much and I'm getting too reliant on it, so I'm trying to go the opposite way from me, I'm being completely honest. I mostly work in the kitchen, so I'm right there next to the kettle. And the uh, the temptation to not just over-caffeinate myself is, is quite strong. <laughs> <laughs> See, because then you get used to it, and then you're like, you know what, I, I just can't function without having 20 cups of t uh, coffee a day. So then it's just like, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to bother yet. Well, let's bring in Henrik. Henrik is probably the biggest coffee drinker I know, more so than my husband, who is American. So uh, let's bring Henrik, see if he has the shakes already this morning. Morning, guys. You're all right. I've had exactly two cups of coffee already today, so you're spot on, Fair. <laughs> Henrik doesn't even look like he's opened the curtains yet today. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so gloomy here, honestly, and I can't find any good lighting in this house. We're packing the house down, so... I'm quite limited as to where I can um, set my office. So, yeah, sorry, guys. Henrik is moving back to Leicester. He moved away and realised what a bad decision he'd made moving out of such a great city. <laughs> so yeah, coming exactly. Back. <laughs> yeah, Le Leicester born and bred. I can't can't leave that place. So moving back in exactly exactly two weeks two weeks today, I think. So yeah, we pretty exciting. Having, having you back with us, Henrik. Oh, thank you, Faye. <laughs> Another team member uh, to bring in is Ben. Look, I'm giving everyone else a heads up, Dal. I just know that you don't like me that much, Fair. You just want to catch me out. I understand. It's all right. I think I you're trying to get payback for that decades coming, aren't you? <laughs> the re revenge is going to come out in reams, I promise you. Ben. Hello. I've just finished my cup of tea, so I'm, I'm awake now. I wasn't a few minutes ago, but it's all starting to kick in for me. Ben didn't realise he was on the stream earlier for about five minutes. So uh, hopefully, you know, he's given himself a bit of a shake and he's going to yeah. be ready to answer some questions. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely. So we are all part of the school and college uh, liaison team here at DMU. And we also have two more members introduced today, quite recent members and thankfully quite recent grads because some of us graduated you know, a few years ago. So uh, <laughs> let me bring in <laughs> Not going to mention anything else. Moving on. 
Morning, Tay. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tay, and I am a recent member of this team, and I'll be able to help you today. If you have any questions or even just say hello, pop them in the comments, and we'll be able to help you. Fabulous. And then we have today as well. Good morning, Nikila. Morning. Hello. How are you? We haven't seen you for a while. Well, no, I'm so confused. I've not done this for a while. I've gotten out my PJs just for you guys. <laughs> nice. Brush your hair, gotten out your PJs. <laughs> well, glad you can join us today because, you know, we do have, I think, some really great advice to pass on today. Something that I think I would have quite liked to have see more about when I was um, looking at university back in the day and you know it's a big decision to make and not one to take lightly so um, any research that you can do joining us on a live stream going on our websites researching courses is all super fantastic along with the positivity today I'm trying to bring it come on we've got energy <laughs> so um, it's nearly Friday <laughs> so um, I think today really we want to start with kind of why go to university I think that might be a good place to start um, and I think there's lots and lots of reasons really to consider it uh, to think about making an application um, Dal are you all right to start us off with why someone might consider university what might be a great benefit of going and studying no <laughs> thanks, for the heads heads up. Up. thanks for the heads up this time though i do appreciate that to be fair now of course no problem so when you when you look at why university or why consider going to to higher education there's usually three segments um in total that we can that we can look at and the first segment that i want to have a look at is the academic side so to a lot of people this would be an obvious reason as to why you'll go because you'd want to get the degree out of it so but what it allows you to do is explore your research interests so at the moment you guys are probably still doing your a levels or your b techs so or you come into the end of that and you're trying to work out right what is it that i'm really interested in if i look back to my own personal journey my personal experiences there weren't a lot that i enjoyed during my a levels apart from a few modules so what i did then i used those modules that i really enjoyed to be the cornerstone of my research i just thought you know what i really enjoy sports sociology i really uh, enjoy sports psychology let me try and fuse those two together and see if i can find a degree out there um, that really resembles who i am and it allows me to build up this identity of what I want to study in regards to university. One of the major benefits of being able to go to university in regards to academia is that you're learning alongside leading experts within your field. So depending on the university that you choose to go to, a lot of the leading researchers are still teaching. So you're getting access to first-hand knowledge from those great academics. You get the opportunity to take up research, so whatever it is that really interests you and what really fascinates you, you get the opportunity to do so. For me, I'm an avid football fan, I absolutely love it, and one of the research um, projects that I did during my master's year was that I looked at how money was ruining the Football Premier League, for example. And I didn't realise before starting my master's degree that I'll get the opportunity to do so and create a philosophical argument that it's ruining the integrity of sport. But it just goes to show that you can find a research or you can find research, sorry, in regards to any parts to your passions, whatever your passion is, whatever your interest is, really try and utilise the time now in terms of finding a course that resembles it. And you're surrounded by like-minded individuals so for me one of the great benefits of being in that environment with other people that shared the same passion of me as me was that we was enabled to engage in critical debates in engage in critical thinking and it broadens the way you think for me i'm can be very tunnel-minded if i have an opinion i like to believe that my opinion's right and I don't really want to listen to anybody else but going to university allowed me to take on board other people's opinions and it allowed me to construct an argument or a debate in terms of trying to disprove those. There's a lot of wider benefits associated to academia, but the main reason is, and this is something that I'll touch upon later, is make sure you choose something that you're going to enjoy. Say, so, don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't leave you hanging, don't worry. Just having to read through the comments, got a little bit sidetracked. We will get to as many comments as we can. We will slot them in throughout the throughout the live stream. 
think Dal touched on some really good points there. Well done, Dal. <laughs> Thanks for the seal of approval. <laughs> you get a seal of approval from me. Um, I think you really touched well on the fact that, um, you know, you might not enjoy what you're studying now. You might not enjoy A-levels or BTEC, so the subjects that you're doing. Um, but you can do something completely different at university. And sometimes even the teaching is completely different and you can more specialise in a particular subject. Um, so, you know, just if you're not enjoying what you're doing right now, it doesn't mean that it won't be different in the future mm. and that university. So just just bear that in mind. Um, Nikila, can you bring us on to perhaps another point as to why um, it might be a good idea to go to university? Mm, of course. I think, um, I think these days one of the main things that students are concerned about when they're making uh, a decision about whether to go to university or which university to go for is to consider the employability aspects regarding the university. I think if anyone were to say that they went to university and weren't considering their outcome of university, so what kind of employability prospects it would have afterwards, I think for many people they want to know that they have a university who is not only going to provide them with um, support regarding their employability, whether that's in the form of helping them with their CVs or helping them in their application processes for placement years or graduate jobs. These are all things to consider when you are deciding your university choices. And I think the main thing I would like to add is that not everybody, when they go to university initially, at the end of the day, you're sometimes as young as 18 years old. Nobody expects you to know what it is that you want to do when you graduate from university. For instance, myself, I did a degree in optics and I thought, this is it. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. In reality, I was 18 when I made that decision. I thought I knew and I did my degree. And although I did enjoy it, I think partway through, I realised I didn't actually want a career in optics. I pursued it afterwards and then I realised this isn't for me. And here I am doing something completely unrelated. So I think the point I'm trying to make is that there is the the fact that when you go to university, you might think that your subjects mean that you have to go on to a different path, a particular path with your career. That's not always the case. Just by sometimes having a degree and having the transferable skills, you will be in a position where you can then move around in different fields and explore different options in your career path. It's not always the one the one straight and narrow path, if that makes any sense. So I think that um, one aspect to consider is that there, um, some universities do have international links with employers, so they may have guest speakers come into lectures to speak to you, so whether that's an industry expert or even um, general uh, lectures that they have in place to make you consider other options. Um, there's options for internships with different faculties and schools, so whether that's internally, so we have a student ambassador programme where students are able to find employment within the Monmouth University. Um, I know that other universities will have sort of similar systems in place as well. So a lot of our uh, university students, so some of our university students actually are in these live streams. Um, we have a couple of media students who are involved in our social media platforms. Um, I know Ben himself worked on our human media. So there are options within the university as well, as well as links externally to um, external um, employers and companies that they have in so I definitely think it is um, important to consider things like um, whether they have a career team at the university that you're applying for, maybe do a bit of research into that. So we have DMU work, so I believe that they'll help you when you're um, applying for placement year or if you're just applying for normal internships. There's always systems in place to help you with your employability aspect um, of university. So it's definitely something that's really important to consider. Ah, thank you, Nikita. That's, that's brilliant. It just goes to show that your know, universities are out there trying to make sure that yes, they are teaching relevant content as part of the subject that students are interested in, but they're also trying to make sure graduates are employable as well. Do you all feel that going to university has helped you to be more employable and looking for jobs, applying yeah. for jobs? Definitely. Yeah, I think um, it does open a lot of uh, opportunities, lots of doors down. No comment. <laughs> we'll pick that one up later, shall we? Um, so we've got things like employability. We've got, you know, the academic side of things, uh, looking at, you know, what you're interested in, what would you learn, want to learn about, and you might already have a career in mind. I'm not sure any of us particularly had a career in mind when we started looking at university. Nikila, you did, didn't you? I did, but look, it just goes to show that everything goes to plan. <laughs> You know, we've yeah, all come from, well. from different backgrounds, haven't we? Dal, yeah. what did you want to do? 
a PE teacher. I thought, you know what, I'm going to go to, to high school and become a PE teacher. So I did. I, I chose my degree like in light of that. And then I actually went and done it and I absolutely hated it. And I thought, oh my God, these are little, I can't even use the right word. Let's just say swines. <laughs> <laughs> um so mad 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 appreciation and respect to all of those secondary school primary school teachers out there you have an abundance of patients that that i don't that I, I don't even merely have so yeah maybe you just had a bad group of kids though <laughs> i don't i went to i went to a couple of schools as well so i can't even blame the kids it could have been me i don't know they gave, the, gave you the naughty kids <laughs> Probably. Maybe there's a reason why we all have decided to work with um, 16 years and upwards. <laughs> Maybe there's yeah. a reason for that, perhaps. Um, so, yeah, I think as well, um, something that you might want to have a look at university. And I think this is something that I was quite interested in, 16-year-old me looking at universities. Um, and, you know, it's OK to admit that, you know, social, the social aspect of university, looking at what a university offers you, in the way of opportunities, uh, student life. Um, it's fine if that's important to you and have a look at what the university looks for. Uh, what we're asking out to the group, what did you look for as part of your kind of student life experience? What was important to you? Any particular opportunities? Um, for me, uh, because I was staying at home, I was particular looking for if there's any placements or traveling abroad kind of opportunities because staying at home wouldn't give me that full kind of student experience of me moving out, living by myself and having that independent experience. So I was in particular looking for whether my course has um, any internships or any placements or like that. And um, fortunately, my, uh, my university did offer those things. So what kind of... Uh, you you went traveling you did a bit of traveling didn't you yeah yeah i was uh, lucky enough to do uh first i in the uh, second year sorry i did a study exchange program so that was a three-week summer program uh it was in china so it was cultural exchange lots of university uh students got together so our university was part of that program um and just did a little bit of learning the language and the culture and also traveling and this was at all the expense of the university and the government so i didn't actually pay for anything um, and then in the last year, I was looking up to do a two months internship in China. And I'm telling you, that was like the best time of my life. Um, because again, this time I wasn't able to move away from home. So after, you know, in the last year, I was able to move away for two months, uh, live by myself, have that experience myself and get into the world of work and have that sort of experience, especially because I was studying a subject like history. Now, I, I didn't know, I didn't have a career path. So I was like, let me choose a subject that's gonna give me lots of different transferable skills, like, you know, um, presenting and, you know, analyzing and things like that. And when I went to China, I actually ended, I didn't even know, I ended up working for a dating app industry. So I ended up working for a dating app and I never knew anything about like marketing or what dating industry is, or I knew of the existing apps and everything. So I had to do all that research by myself and get used to all that stuff. Um, but again, I think if you have like those opportunities, especially like something like DMU Global, definitely take them because these like initiatives like DMU Global, they are paid for and helped for by the university. And, you know, because the university wants you to have those experiences. Um, they want you to have all those, you know, um, experience. So when you do go out into the world of work, um, you know, you're more aware and, you know, you're ready for it as well. Yeah. You make me want to go on holiday now. Hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. Same, too. same. Soon we'll hopefully be able to start up traveling again and accessing these fantastic opportunities. So fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, something else that I know I I um, did when I started university is looked at societies and clubs. So that can be sports. It can be more to do with the subjects that you're interested in. So we do all sorts. You can get involved in football, but then you can also do something like you know, electronics club, for example, you could do anything from Bollywood dancing, um, you know, chess playing, whatever it is that you want to do. And we have, I think, at DMU about 200, I think now, different kind of clubs and societies. Was there anything that you joined or why would you, why might you recommend joining um, a society as part of your university experience? I think um, for me, that was, I only joined a society in my second year 
And I really wish I'd just got involved from the start because it's a really good way of making uh, a lot of friends sort of outside your course. And it's a really good way of just getting involved with stuff outside of your course. I think in my first year, um, I sort of just, because I stayed quite local to Leicester and I was working quite a lot, I just didn't really sort of have the time and I just didn't really kind of push myself. So when I got into second year, I joined Demon Media that Nikila said. And, and I guess this ties into what Nikila and Dow were talking about in terms of, you know, building up those skills and building up that experience. Because I did a, a degree in computer science, but by joining that media society, by joining Demon Media, I was able to get involved with uh, running my own radio show every week. I was able to produce my own TV shows. I learned quite a lot about sort of streaming and media and marketing. Um, and I ran a, a magazine, so I was one of the lead editors for the magazine. So all of that was really, really good experience for me. And like I say, some of my best friends and people I still speak to after I graduated were people that I met through Demon Media. So I think for me, if I look back on my university experience, that was the society that I joined was was my sort of highlight. I can't really speak for sports teams. I've never never been part of a sports team. I'm going to leave that one to Henrik, I think, because, uh, yeah, you can't gonna, not going to catch me kicking a ball around, I'm afraid. <laughs> Yeah, similar similar to Ben, but I I, I went down the, the sports sports route as opposed to society. So uh, I always played rugby since like the age of ten. So I knew before I even went to DMU that was the one sports team I was going to sign up for. Um, so yeah, I played rugby for three years at DMU, um, and I think it's just a really nice way to break up your week. You know, if you're in lectures and tutorials and stuff Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, just having that day on a Wednesday where you can go travel, play a bit of sport. Um, you know, celebrate your wins afterwards, hopefully that sort of thing. Like it's a really good, really good experience. Um, and then same again, like similar to Ben, you know, if, if you're in a sports team society, you have the opportunity to be on a, on a committee um, and then, <laughs> and then um, within that as well, you're going to gain a load of um, employability as well. So, you know, ma micromanaging people, leadership, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, really good, really good thing. I, I suggest any any if you've got any reservations about joining society or sports team, just fully immerse yourself in the whole experience when you are uh, considering going to uni and that sort of thing. So yeah, yeah fantastic. Um, I think for me it was just again making all those different those different friendship groups. Um, Dal, cheeky little <laughs> grin there in the corner. Um, it's because you never joined a sports team or a society, did you? You were just. Uh, so constant, you know, looking straight ahead in your academia, really focused. It was always in the library. Didn't you want to go out and meet people, yeah. Anti Quite introverted, antisocial, <laughs> introverted. I like the second word more than the first. <laughs> and you know that that's okay. You know, it's your decision what you want to do at university. If you want to go out and make friends with absolutely everybody, make lots of friendship groups. But if you're a bit more reserved and you, know, you don't want to do that you know it's, it's it's up to you figure out your priorities um you know if you want to live with people or if you want to stay at home if you quite like to to stay to stay with family um during your university experience as well there's lots of options different ways of experiencing student life and we did actually have a question earlier um from luke that was a nice question how was your first year at university? What was your experience like? Anybody want to, to share? I think I'll go well. first. Oh, oh yeah, go on down. It, it will take Faye longer to think about it, you see. She has to go, <laughs> further. She has to go further back than all of us, so. <laughs> oh, if we were in person right now, Dal. <laughs> Mine was actually pretty good, to be fair. So. Although what I did keep myself to myself, I feel like I spent a lot of the time in the library because I just wanted to keep up with speed and really hit the ground running within my first year. But I went to university on a sports scholarship, so I had to play sport anyway in my first year. Um, I quit in my second year, so I had an injury, but the real reason was I just generally couldn't be bothered to do so. And the university sports team wasn't that good. And I'm a terrible loser. So for me, getting involved in... The, the whole sports side and just transitioning generally into university. I had a perception that it was going to be really difficult. I thought everyone's going to be at a certain level academically. And there was a big pressure for me what, that I had in my own head thinking, you know what, I'm going to have to work twice as hard to try and maintain or keep up with everyone else on the course. Because for me personally, A-levels was by far one of the most hardest, most challenging things that I've ever done. So I did an undergrad, did a po uh, postgrad, started a PhD, and I would still say that 
A levels has been it was so so difficult so for me I always had that concern in and I thought right one of the ways I could prepare myself or equip myself was that you know what let me just try and focus on going to the library after my sessions keeping on top of my work and seeing how that goes I don't know about the rest of you guys I didn't really do much socially in my first year that I can speak about on a live stream at 11.26, you see. I think mine is similar. I, I I wish I'd got more involved. Like I said before, I wish I'd got more involved with stuff. So I definitely think the best advice I could give based on that is, yes, obviously focus on your work uh, and obviously make sure you pass your first year. But I think a lot of you will find that actually first year is easier than A-levels in a lot of cases. So you, you've got a bit more time to sort of relax into it, make the most of the experience, join different teams, sports, societies, whatever. Um, and just, yeah, just kind of enjoy it because when you kind of get to second and particularly third year, there's going to obviously be less time for you to actually just sort of chill and less time to actually sort of spend time with people and, and, and focus on those societies. So that would be my advice is particularly in your first year, throw yourself into lots of opportunities um, so that you can build up that experience. Else? Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, I've, I, I joined a sports team first, like first year, all the way until my third year. And I think definitely one of my highlights of being at university. Um, I don't know if there's any any rugby fans in the um, in the audience, but um, <laughs> playing playing varsity, uh, in, you know, I was lucky enough to play three varsities, but in my first year, especially um, playing at Welford Road. So the Leicester Tigers Stadium against University of Leicester. Um, in front of a crowd of you know six seven thousand people, that was really really quite special, and that's something that I'll I'll always remember. Um, and yeah, and like, similar to to Ben and stuff, you know, I've got a lot of friends from the rugby team that I'm still really close to now, even though I have graduated. So yeah, definitely just throw yourself into all the opportunities you can. Brilliant. So I think probably we can move on. Um, can't find my banner. Bear with. <laughs> so that was a great question thank you so much um luke saeed we think that dial is pretty funny too thank you, thank you <laughs> don't, give that. don't give him that don't give him that <laughs> <laughs> <don't need> <laughs> not necessarily funny ha ha but uh, <laughs> yes. um hi Ibishek. i think we've seen you before in a few of our streams so welcome back great to see you joining us again um Chloe, I have posted the link in um, the chat so you can find all of the clubs and societies that we currently offer at DMU. Um, if you can't find the one that you want, uh, you can, can start your own society if you wish. So the Student Union um, is the place that you need to go, have a chat with them and they will help you to go about it and let, let you know all the rules and regulations you need to follow to go about creating your own um, society. So yeah, something quite good to put on the CV, I think something that you started. Um, so I think probably quite important that we move on to actually how you do your research. And we did have quite a few um, questions before we actually um, started the live stream today. So we had Ellie, where do you start? It's a very, very good question. Um, and hopefully we'll answer that today. I think that's how I felt when I started my university research, thinking, where do I start? There's so many universities, there's so many courses how do I narrow it down? And some people will have that vision already of what they want to do. Um, and some people will just think, well, I want to do something I enjoy. So start thinking there. Um, Henrik, I think you might be able to, to start us off here on a little bit of the um, the research that we might need yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah, let's give it okay. a go. Yeah. We'll cool. pass Thank over you to you so I can officially sneeze because I've wanted to sneeze <laughs> for about five minutes. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah, so I think obviously doing your research is going to be one of the most important parts um, of wh when you're deciding where to go to uni and what to study. Um, obviously, if you're in year 12 or, you know, your first year of sixth form, that kind of thing, um, when you come back in September, you're going to be starting the whole UCAS, pro UCAS process. So from then until applying in January, um, and then if you're in year 13, you know, it's going to fly, it's going to fly. Um, so definitely make the most of that time that you've got to, to start doing your research early doors. Um, like Faye said, you know, there's close to 200 different universities you can study at. And, you know, there's something, there's thousands and thousands of different courses. Um, and they will range from more of your like traditional courses, your histories, English, that sort of stuff, to the more obscure sort of subjects. Like I studied a, a human resource management undergraduate degree. So, I mean, as business courses go, that's fairly you know, fairly niche. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, if, if you're if you're lucky enough that you know you, what career you want to do, so say if you want to be a nurse, you want to be an engineer, obviously by studying those courses at uni, you know, that's going to be the most logical choice. But sort of like myself, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. So I decided to do a business minded course just because I thought it would open up a lot of, a lot of pathways and doors and keys and that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And and yeah, it just, it just made the most sense for me at the time. But I think obviously the biggest thing is study a subject that you're going to enjoy because obviously you're at university for at least three years. There is a financial cost. You are investing your time and your effort as well. Um, if you are doing a subject that you have a genuine passion for, something that you're genuinely interested for and something you enjoy, you're going to find it a lot easier than having to, you know, slog yourself through three years of a course that, you know, maybe you don't enjoy. Um, so it, there's a lot to think about, you know, do you want to stay local? Do you want to move away? Um, do you want to study a course that's got an integrated placement year within there? Um, you know, think about the sports societies, that kind of thing that are at that institution, the league tables, what the employability rates are like, that kind of thing. Um, there is all sorts of different stuff to look at. I'd say definitely start thinking about if you haven't already decided where you want to go or maybe you're not quite sure about what course you want to study, definitely look at university websites. So they'll have all the courses on there. You better look at all the entry requirements. Um, the UCAS website as well, um, that'll have all the courses on there. Same again, but there is a lot on there. So, you know, start narrowing it down. Um, and yeah, and similar to like what you guys are jumping on today. So attend workshops and uh, live streams like this, like you are today. So yeah, thank you for joining. Um, and they're really good insights, you know, to have a chat with the guys that work at the universities uh, and yeah attend loads uh, attend different universities you know compare contrast all that kind of thing um, but yeah definitely start doing your research as soon as you can uh, because obviously you want to make the right choice so yeah i don't know if anyone wants to jump in with that jump on anything mm -hmm. can't hear you Faye. <laughs> so we'll leave you hanging there too busy yeah. admiring <laughs> the, uh, the nice colour scheme going on in the background. The, uh, There's a lot of the dark mustard yellow. And greens. Mustardy, yeah. yeah, love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a really good place to start. Um, I'm going to pick on Ben. Ben, what else can you be doing? So, to tie into all of that, one of the biggest and easiest ways to sort of research, obviously, in a normal circumstance when the world hasn't got a bit crazy, would be actually going to visit that university. So, you'd be able to go along to the university and often find out a lot of those things that Henry just mentioned, you know, you'd be able to go and talk to some of the academics about what the course is going to be like, you know, where have graduates from that course gone on to work afterwards. And that gives you a really good insight into what kind of course that is going to be and what kind of things they're going to teach you and what kind of support you get from the university. So going and visiting a university in normal circumstance is the best way to just find out anything you want to know about that university. Obviously, unfortunately, we are in strange times and uh, obviously we are supposed to be sort of uh, social distancing and then we're in lockdown so open days are currently not going ahead however i know a lot of universities as included are doing a virtual style open day um what we will do is hopefully we'll pop a link in the comments where you can visit our open day you can book on to that and that will give you an opportunity to obviously book on and then you'll be reminded on the day to come along. It's on the 4th of July, it's on a Saturday, and we'll have loads of live streams in the same way as this. You'll be able to speak to current students, you'll be able to speak to academics, you will be able to uh, find out more about the courses, have a look at the facilities. We're looking at doing things like virtual campus tours. So at least we can show you virtually what the campus looks like. I think it's important that you do find out about the courses and you have a look at things like uh, the sort of facilities and look at the course side of things. But also just getting a feel of the campus is also really important. We've had students who have spoken uh, about their sort of time when they've been researching universities and they've said, you know, they've gone to one university and they really liked the feel of it. They like the vibe, they like how it looked. And then they've gone to another university and they really like the course, but the, the actual campus wasn't really for them. They didn't really like that sort of, and I, I don't really like using the word vibe, but I guess it is that sort of vibe of the campus. So I think it, that is also a really important aspect to it as well. Uh, the other thing you can obviously look at with open days is obviously looking at accommodation. So for those students that are thinking of going further afield, if they're looking to actually move out and stay in university accommodation, it's really important that they look at where they're actually going to be living. So uh, hopefully, again, with us being in lockdown, there'll be tools and there'll be resources for you to have a look at things like that as well. So yeah, open days are really, really important. Have a look at the virtual open days. Uh, get yourself booked on if you would like to find out more about the universities. Brilliant. So yeah, how many 
Open days, do you think you all went to? Had a look at. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I definitely agree with Ben because I did, um, I studied at two different universities and I didn't go to an open day for one of the universities. And that was kind of a regret for me because I actually didn't like it because sometimes you would like the campus, but the course content you would not like. And then sometimes you would love the, you know, course content but the campus itself like the social life and all that stuff you wouldn't like so for me because i didn't go and i didn't ask the right questions and i didn't speak to you know current students or um as such um i did regret my decision but then when i did move to you know uh, the university that i graduated from it was like a really good time for me and i did have a, a amazing time so instead of having those regrets make sure you get that in done place so you know you don't end up like me and having to transfer or like having those decisions being made because it is a hassle because i mean you are investing so much time at the university and it is something that you want to enjoy you are there to have fun and you want to if you don't enjoy the course if you don't enjoy the campus if you don't enjoy the social life you won't have the best university experience mm -hmm. yeah did anybody else want to to jump in on on open days virtual i would say if you can obviously appreciate right now it might not be entirely possible visit the accommodation because they will use wide angle cameras and great lighting and great filters and make a place look great and you will get there like i did in first year you look nothing like you thought it did luckily i didn't go to dnu which has a lot better accommodation and um, but where i went to university my halls on picture looked amazing I got there and I remember my mum unpacking my stuff being like, do I leave you here? Like it was that bad, but there was nothing I could do at that point. It was honestly, it was so bad. She was like, do you want to come home? And I was like, mum, like I've got my lectures tomorrow. Like I've got to go really. And she's like, I can't leave you here. It was that bad. So oh very careful, look into your accommodation, make sure it's a safe area. <laughs> that is what I would recommend. Okay, you you lived at home for your university yeah. experience. How how did you find living at home? Um, was it the best thing to do? Support from the family, um, I mean, or did you look back and think, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> Um, I don't know whether I regret it or not because I, I mean, with my internship, I was able to move away from home. I mean, there's good things and bad things. Good thing, free food all the time. You don't have to cook. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to, you know, all that stuff. So, um, staying at home was good. But then, you know, there's a lot of like going to the university, spending your day there, um, you know, coming back home and then, you know, uh, in terms of like studying like that would affect you know I'm in my room I have my brothers and like when you live with three brothers um, it's quite noisy and loud but then you have the library so I did even though I stayed at home I did spend most of my day at the university I stayed in the library or I stood uh, in and around the campus where I could do my studying and then at the end of the day come back home so it didn't really feel like you know I was home home um, I was able to save a lot of money with you know I wouldn't have to pay for accommodation you know i wouldn't have to pay for transport to the university because you know i was getting lifts for my brothers and my dad um but in terms of that but if you i mean if i did move out away from home i would have a total experience because my friends who did move to leicester um you know i got to see their accommodation i got to see what they were living like and it is slightly different because you know they have more independent they were able to order pizza pieces at like 3 a.m i'm not able to do that like my mom would ask who's knocking at the door at 3 a.m. So definitely um, think about that. If if it is doable, you know, if you live in the same city, if you do want to uh, go to that university, then look at the again, like I said before, the wider opportunities. Whether you can do the extra, you know, traveling and all that stuff. But if you are moving away from home, you know, it gives you that independence. Like when I was living by myself for two months, even though it was only two months, not three years, that two months really, you know, um, helped me understand whether I could live by myself, you know, in a foreign country. So yeah, it um, just depends. Yeah, I think there's quite, if you're looking specifically at DMU, they do have quite um, a selection of different different halls. And Ben, you lived in halls at, at De Montfort University. How did you make that kind of selection of where you wanted to stay? Was it mostly to do with money? Was it kind of whether you could live with just boys or boys and girls, or did you have to have your own bathroom? Yeah. Um, accommodation was a funny one for me um, because I, I'm from Leicester anyway. My parents live about half an hour out in the city centre, but I sort of wanted to stay local because I'd got part-time work here at the time. Uh, I worked for a Blockbusters for about 
eight months into my university career before I was made redundant, uh, RIP Blockbusters, best job I ever had. Um, but I decided I wanted to stay local, but I wanted the full experience of being uh, in halls. So I looked at all the different accommodation that Demi had to offer. Now there's a few different ones. So there are some that are um, where you're sharing a bathroom and sharing a kitchen. The one that I stayed in, I've got my own bathroom. Um, I'm a little bit of a clean freak, so I quite like the idea of having my own bathroom and having my own space, but I still had to share a kitchen with uh, a group of the lads. And um, some of them were really clean, which was brilliant. A couple of them, not so much, um, and they used to really annoy me. So it, you get that kind of different experience depending on who you're living with and obviously depending on where you go. So different accommodation will vary in terms of price it will vary in terms of location the other reason i picked the one that i did was because it was literally on campus i could roll out of bed five minutes before a lecture and still be there pretty much on time because it was only a two minute walk to my lecture building so location also is an important factor when you're looking at that sort of accommodation um i was fortunate enough to be able to actually look into that accommodation uh, even before I was a student, even before I was actually starting my university research, because I had friends that also came to the university and were also staying in accommodation. So I was able to kind of go to them and actually visit their flats, which is, I think, quite a unique situation for a lot of students. The only time you're ever going to get to look at accommodation generally is going to be on things like open days. So those are things to consider obviously have a look at what kind of flat it's going to be if you can have a look at how big the bedrooms are it might even be going literally down to whether you get a single or a double bed i was unfortunately only in a single bed um but other accommodation might provide you with double beds if that's something to consider um but have a look to see you know what the kind of kitchen facilities are like and whether you get your own bathroom and then particularly location something that tay mentioned about requiring things like travel costs um, you know, some universities have their accommodation a little bit further out. So you have to kind of invest in a bus pass actually to get to your lectures in the morning. We're fortunate enough that at DMU we don't have to do that. All of our accommodation is within walking distance, but it is certainly something to consider when you are kind of doing that wider research. Cool. Yeah, so there are actually some videos on our website of um, our accommodation. Just checking, I'm not on mute. <laughs> Everyone's so quiet in the background. Uh, so if you do want to have a look at some of the videos that we offer, um, you can again go onto our virtual um, campus tour, again posted into the comments section there, so you can find that quite easily um, and start looking around. We've got some students um, offering tours where we actually take you inside and you have a little bit of a look around, have a look mm -hmm. to see what the rooms are like. So you can find that. Um, by going on dmu.ac.uk forward slash VOD. Lots of videos, really helpful hints and tips there as well for you to have a look at. Um, so we've talked about kind of looking at open days or virtual open days. Uh, we've had a bit of a chat about accommodation, if that applies to you, or if you want to stay at home, what are some of the, the perks of that? Yes, you might not be able to order pizza at 3 a.m., but perhaps, you know, you might be able to um, share with, the, you know, the washing load, uh, share meals, you know, food costs, things like that. So there's lots of kind of um, advantages, really, I think, to both situations. Uh, Dal, are you able to talk to us about um, kind of how you start going and pick, picking your course, finding out what's really right um, for you? Yeah, sure. So, of course, the course is arguably one of the most important segments of you going to university. The main reason as to why you're going to come to university is because of the course. And as I was mentioning earlier, it's very, very important that you choose something that you want to study. Now, I understand having taught at university, a lot of students do face pressures from their parents to do certain things. You know, me coming from an Indian household, trying to tell certain people in my family, you know what, I'm going to go study sport, raised a few eyebrows for sure. But one of my biggest tips that I could give to you guys is make sure you do something that you enjoy because it's going to be you are the one that's going to go to those lectures, you're the one that's going to take up the student loan, you're the one that's going to have to repay that after you graduate. So really ensure it's something that you enjoy. Picking upon something that Ben was mentioning, open days are a fundamental part of what you guys should be doing now, albeit you can't actually physically go onto a campus and go see an open day, so please ensure that you're doing your course research through these open dates. So I know for our open day that's happening on the 4th of July, there'll be an opportunity for you to sample some lectures. You'll probably be able to speak to some of the academic staff. So if you have any questions about the course, have a look at what the course modules are like and what you're actually going to learn. 
one of the great things about going to university is that you have a wide variety of choice in regards to the courses that you guys can do. But the negative aspect to that is sometimes it's like for me going into a sweet shop, how do I then buy the sweet that I actually want when there's about hundreds that I could possibly eat? So it's the same sort of thing in regard to your course. So how do you narrow it down to those five different choices? Some of the things that you should be thinking about are what are the opportunities like? Does the course provide you with any links to industry? Do you get an international opportunity? What are the work, what employers do the course work with? How is the course taught? What are you more suited to as a learner? Do you prefer having examinations? Do you prefer assignments? How much contact time do you get with your academics or your tutors? Because this all varies from course to course and it also varies from institution to institution. And make sure you're aware of what the entry requirements are. So it's very important that you understand that you guys have the right grades or the right criteria in regards to getting onto the course that you wish to go on to. Some really good, good hints and tips there, Dale. Thank you so much, Faye. Um, I think we all agree there. Um, mm. I think course is really important. If you especially, you know, you're furthering your education and, you know, committing another three, four years of, you know, your life, your young life to, um, to education, that you've got to, you got to enjoy it um, but you know if at any point that you decide that that course isn't for you I know we've just had someone in the comments say that they want to change their faculty and um, if at any point you do change your mind you can go and talk to the people at the university people who work within faculties as we call it so they have they kind of look after a certain range of subjects so you have several different faculties at university Usually they're grouped together, so you might have art and design together, you might have more the sciences together, and you can go and have a chat with them, um, speak to them, why is it not the right course, can you change, um, is it that you want to completely change the course and do something quite different. Um, so yeah, that's something that, you know, that if something does go wrong, there's always people to speak to if you wish to change your mind. Um, I think as well going on to the next point is, you know, we've talked about accommodation, we've talked about open days, um, I can see you all smiling away, really eager to talk about the next thing, aren't you? <laughs> um, what about location? How did you pick where you wanted to be? Um, yeah, um, I'll talk about city location. Um, so, uh, you know, um, when you're looking at universities you want to make sure your university is not in the middle of nowhere and where there's only like one pub down the lane or something um so definitely when you are looking city the location itself is so important because that will provide you know the opportunities themselves so is it a campus based or is it uh you know in and around the city so campus base is basically the emu is everything is on campus um you know so you have the accommodation on campus you have a few shops on campus on the courses so everything is within that kind of bubble the circle um and then if it is you know some cities are uh, some universities are spread out across the city you know the campuses may be half an hour away that was one of my universities like i had a lecture from uh, i had to move from one building to another and the other other class was right after the other um the next Next one and it's like half an hour's walk how can I make it to my next lecture if it's far so definitely look into that because um you know would you need those bus passes um to travel that's an additional cost because you know you are paying for all these things and whether that's coming out from your own pocket or student loans if it is student loans or um you know you would be, need to pay them back as well um and then also can you see yourself living in that city um does it have those cells does it have those opportunities um you know is there things for you to do um what's out there socially um even academically you know um can you join like lots of clubs or um uh volunteering for example can you do can you help out the community itself um and also like you know is transport links to back home so if you are moving away in that city like you know the train station is about half an hour or 45 minutes away and you have a time schedule for a train sometimes the, a lot of the trains we live in the uk they get cancelled like they get cancelled all the time are you able to go back home um often um with leicester with demofi university our train station is literally about 10 15 minutes walk away so you don't necessarily have to get a taxi to the campus to your accommodation i mean if you can 
carry the suitcases, that's fair enough. I wouldn't be able to. Um, again, driving in and around, how accessible is it? Are you able to drive around? If you are living at home, are you able to drive there? Would you have to get a bus? All those things like that. Um, as I mentioned, opportunities within the city. Are there lots of jobs around the city? Are there lots of part-time jobs available? With Demartford University, you know, we're literally five minutes walk away from home. So if you are not working um, as an ambassador on campus, then you may you might want to think about working in town. You know, I when I was at university, um, I did my part-time jobs in um, USC. I don't know if you guys remember USC that's shut down now, um, but I did my part-time in USC and Clark's, and that was really helpful because that was giving me additional money, um, spending money, um, and I didn't ask parents. You know, because sometimes when you're at university, you don't want to ask your parents for money. Um, so again, uh, opportunities within the universities work. Does it have uh, flexible hours? You know, you are there to study, but um, if you have that spare time, uh, can you build your experience by working? Um, can you do placements as well? Does that university have links with other universities? A lot of universities nowadays have, you know, uh, sister universities in different parts of the world. So, you know, I know Demotfer University does have a few links in America, I believe, and China. Um, so if you did, uh, you know, you can do your one year placement in a, you can finish your, one year in a different country, but you know, as part of your course. Um, again, volunteering um, opportunities within the university and the city itself. Does it have like, um, you know, DMU square mile where, you know, you go out and help, you know, the underprivileged kind of um, people or children within the, um, you know, the city, you're helping volunteering with children who can't, like, you know, who can't read, um, who, who come from certain backgrounds. So you wanna make sure all those things are there. Um, Definitely. So when you're looking at city, the city brings the opportunities themselves. The city, you know, um, I think that's a very important part. Luckily, I lived in Leicester and Leicester Great University. Um, so I was able to stay here, be involved in all those different things and still have that whole uh, university experience. Mm -hmm. You're hanging for a little bit there. <laughs> um, <laughs> You've very actually quite helped, um, you know, quite timely touched upon um, work placements and working opportunities. So just generally um, working at university, you might find that you will get a student loan, but it might not always go as far. Sorry, I'm so distracted because there is an animal on the screen. <laughs> um, get complete. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about now because I am sidetracked. Sorry. by the cute dog <laughs> on Henry's <laughs> lap um, I feel like she is going to steal the show. I'm just going to put that out I'll there. Put down, I'll put down. <laughs> Who cares what we're going to talk about now? No, she can stay with us. Don't you worry. Um, so Binky has joined us um, for the rest of the stream. We've got not, not got long to, to go. Um, <laughs> so um, did anybody else kind of look at work opportunities whilst they're at university? How did it work for you? Um, did you find that your your student loan was enough to cover you whilst you're at university? I think um, for myself, I was in a rather expensive city. So I was in Cambridge, which is a lot more expensive in terms of living costs and transport costs and uh, rent as well is a lot dearer than um, we have in DMU. So for myself, my student loan didn't wasn't enough for me to live comfortably and um, not be living on toast basically after my accommodation. So for myself, I did know that I would need some part time work. Um, what I did is I looked into my city and I already worked at a retail store, New Look, um, in Leicester, um, where I live. So what I did is I looked to see if the city that I was going to would have another store that I was able to transfer over to. So once I knew for definite which city I was going to be living in, um, my manager called over the other manager in the Cambridge store and um, organised transfers for me. So the great thing about that was that when I was home for things like Easter, Christmas, the summer holidays, I was able to transfer between the two stores and make sure that I had a consistent level of income. So I definitely think that there are options and there is flexibility involved. So definitely look into all the options that are available there for you. Yeah, Ben, you worked whilst you are at university, didn't you? I did, yeah. I um, So I was fortunate actually that the society, the media society I talked about earlier, at the time, and it's not the case now, unfortunately, but it was at the time, the SU were actually paying people to run it um, and actually organize it because it was quite a big sort of high profile thing. So I was actually paid 10 hours a week to be the sort of magazine editor. Um, 
which was really good and it meant that I got to work quite closely with the students union at the time so that was really really good um before that I worked as I mentioned before I worked in blockbusters and then I worked for O2 and then I also did a placement year a placement summer uh, internship between my sort of first and second year working in a timber yard I wasn't actually working with the wood I was just doing IT um but that was really good ways of sort of me just kind of building up a little bit of money so that when I actually was at university those 10 hours were enough for me to sort of essentially spending money, pocket money, um, but I've got enough saved up that I could sort of be comfortable uh, during my sort of study time. Great. Um, I think really then, just to wrap up as we're hitting that one hour mark, um, is just to answer some of the questions that came through, um, both on pr prior to the, to the live stream and also during the live stream as well. And we did get a really good question actually prior and one of them was um can you do more than one course at university and um, this one was a bit more specific to applying to both medicine and pharmacy what's kind of the rules with applying to more than one course at university generally anyone <laughs> i think you definitely there are options too, like Luke, UCAS will allow you to apply for different universities. I think the main thing to bear in mind is that you only submit the one personal statement for all of the options that you make and you can make a maximum of five choices. If you're applying for history, math, biology, chemistry, it will be very difficult to not make a general personal statement. So you might make a general personal statement, which is great, but then you've not actually answered anything that they, a particular department want to hear from. So if you make it to chemistry focus, the math departments are gonna read this and think, have they made a mistake here? They don't even understand the course. They're talking about chemistry. It's very difficult to try and spread yourself thin. I think um, what I would probably recommend is that if you are unsure, if you do feel like you're not convinced about what course you wanna do, maybe do a bit more research before you make a decision because you wouldn't want to spread yourself too thin with your personal statement and then not apply to anything that's mm -hmm. actually going to be a good application. Yeah, I think if you are thinking of going down the route of two different courses, yeah, as Nikila said, in m most situations you are going to have to look at picking your specialism in that regard. So something like medicine and pharmacy, they are two extremely um, sort of course intensive um, or work intensive courses you'll find that they are one of the one of the courses that is going to be sort of nine to five days. So trying to do both of those is going to be uh, impossible. But you'll find that there are courses out there that will allow you to do something called a joint honours. Now, there's not loads of these available, but there are situations where you could do something like um, semi-related courses, so accounting and finance or politics and international relations or Eng English and history uh, or journalism and politics. You know, there's, there's courses that you can sort of squash together in certain circumstances but that constitutes as a, a joint honours where it's 70% of one and sort of 30% of another. So it isn't you doing two courses, but it's doing that sort of combined course. So you, there are some opportunities to do that and you can have a look for those, but in situations like medicine and pharmacy, again, because they're quite intensive courses, it's going to be very difficult for you to A, apply for one, as Nikita just said, but also it's going to be almost physically impossible for you to actually do those courses at the same time. Yeah, so with medicine itself, you can apply to um, four for medicine and then a fifth choice that can be for something else. So the answer to this specific question is yes, you can apply to medicine um, and you can also apply to pharmacy. Again, you can only write the one application, um, but universities are aware, but they would assume that medicine is your, your first choice if that's what you've written your personal statement about. Uh, we had another really interesting question and I think this might be more towards perhaps degree apprenticeships, which is something that is probably becoming a bit more and more popular, something that is, is you know, the portfolio of courses is growing. So this um, question from Luke, are there any recommended websites which we could use to find companies uh, to sponsor to go to university? So I think this one probably would more link to degree apprenticeships maybe, would you, would you agree? Yeah, um, check out the apprenticeship resources. Um, the, I, I was I had a really long chat with a, a lady who worked for the apprenticeships team at one of the fairs that we were working at, and she said that the best advice that she gives to people that want to go down this route is actually seek out the companies first. So use the government apprenticeship service and use the other apprenticeship service um, resources that are out there. Um, and then obviously just speak to the companies that way, because it's a lot easier to find your routes through 
going down that particular route and using those online resources. And I say the government's got quite a lot of online resources through the apprenticeship service that way. So that would be the best route, I think. Yeah, so usually I think the gov.uk website has a whole hoard of information mm -hmm. about lots of things you need to know in life, lots and lots of things, visas, uh, driving license, all sorts, uh, wealth, a wealth of information. So I think really just to finish on, um, I guess I'd kind of like to ask you all what maybe your top tips would be with researching or mm -hmm. perhaps something that, you know, you'd wish you'd done whilst you're at university. Um, or maybe whether you think university was definitely worth the cost, cost. And if you want to go around and, and, and shout out whilst I post some links in the comments of how you can uh, get in touch with us further, that would be great. Yeah. Um, I've already talked. I'll let you guys go first. <laughs> Nikila? Yeah, I would say um, to not box yourself in. So I think my biggest mistake that I made was that I was very narrow-minded and I had the mentality of okay this is the career that I want this is the degree that I must do I must do that I personally would say that to an extent I do regret my degree choice in a sense because it was very very niche so optics is a very very narrow field to go down I almost wish that I chose something that I would enjoy more rather than something that I thought would give me the career that I wanted because as we've seen for me anyway I haven't gone down the career path that I thought I was going down anyway so I wish I'd chosen a degree, which I knew that I would enjoy more, and um, maybe something that was a bit more broader, that would give me a bit more variety of skills, rather than something that was very, very niche. Luckily, obviously, you do still develop a lot of transferable skills, so I was still able to find employment in different career paths. But I definitely think, as a whole, if you're not 100% convinced of what you want to do, and it's very difficult to make that decision at the age of, what, 17, 18, just don't box yourself in too soon, because you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some really good advice. Henrik and Binky, what advice would you uh, give <laughs> reflecting um, say, on your <laughs> university experience? Um, I'd say definitely for me, um, maybe sounds like a similar situation to Tay as well, actually. Um, I, I originally um, applied to a university, you know, way back when. Um, there was quite a lot of pressure at the time. So it was the last year where the fees were a little bit lower, where they were 3,300. And I sort of rushed into going to an institution that I... Um, didn't really want to go to and I never went for an open day there and you know I ended up going to an institution I was there for about a year and a half and I eventually ended up saying that my time there was over uh, and I left after you know the Easter break in my second year um, and then I worked for the remainder of the year then went to DMU so what I'd say is do your research because you know I, I made a mistake there um, you know there's a financial cost to it as well you know I had to pay for accommodation at the time and obviously everything's a learning curve but I think just, just do your research, make sure you're applying to the right course, uh, make sure you're applying to the right city. Um, what I would say is visit the city that you are going to apply to before you before you apply to it, because, you know, you're going to spend at least three years there. Um, you want to feel like it's somewhere that you can eventually make your home for a few years and, you know, you're going to feel safe and you can travel around that kind of thing. And these are all things that I didn't do at the time uh, that I wish I did. And But yeah, I mean, I'm happy with where I ended up, but probably took me a, a little bit longer to get there, I think, so... Yeah, I think I think things happen for a reason. You got where you you needed to be. You know, you had that support somewhat from the university to then start making the right yeah. choices. So sometimes we can only learn by um, making a few mistakes along the way. Just I think make sure to always speak to people about you know anything you know that might be troubling you, um, and how we can go about making the situation better. I think um, as Henrik mentioned. Uh, very aptly on time there, fantastic. Um, it's great if you can explore a university campus, whether that's virtually, uh, whether that's when we can obviously do safely uh, through social distancing. Uh, so if you uh, can um, join us um, either for an open day, so that is on Saturday the 4th of July. Um, if you sign it beforehand, we will send you some very um, useful, useful information, information about what to expect. Um, if you can't make it or you're already you're really, really excited, we've whet your appetite and you want to go and have a look to see what the campus looks like, uh, you can go and have a look at our virtual tour online. And again, the link's here and it's posted in the comments. Um, so you can go back to this as a reference point. 
Um, if we haven't managed to answer your question today, or if you think about any questions later on, uh, you can get in touch with us. So do you, you do have a general uh, number and email address, so inquiry at dmu.ac.uk. But if you'd specifically like to speak to a student um, about their subject area, so say you're interested in pharmacy, and you see that we do actually have students studying pharmacy, you can see them on our website on the link um, on the screen now. Then you can ask them lots of questions about what to expect as part of the course. I think they're a great place to start as well to find out more information about the course. So thank you very much, everyone, for um, for joining us today. Um, I think it's uh, it's nice to see some faces, especially when you can't really go outside with the weather right now as well, have a bit of a chat. Um, and again, if we haven't answered your questions, do feel free. We're also on the student chat as well, so you can speak to advisors and you can speak to students. Is there anything else that I need to mention, anybody? Anything that I've forgotten? No, Nothing. I think we've covered it. I think so. good. Fab. Thank you very much for joining us today, and hopefully we'll see you on the next live stream. See you later. Bye-bye.